It's easy to think the world's next great tech companies will come from Silicon Valley, New York, or Toronto. But innovators from around the world beg to differ, and I'm out to discover who they are and where they're from. From Addis to Jakarta, from Dhaka to Bogota, I'm Dan Herman, and this is their world, our future. I think it's fair to say that most people couldn't find Uruguay on a map, and fair enough, it's a tiny place that doesn't make a lot of noise. But while some of Uruguay's neighbors have got stuck in crises and instability, Uruguay has become the Switzerland of Latin America, rich, stable, and now home to a thriving tech sector, in particular in financial technology. So I thought it would be fitting to speak to one of the country's top fintech leaders, Jimena Alman, co-founder of Prometeo Open Banking, headquartered in the very sleepy capital of Montevideo. So let's be honest, Uruguay isn't a place that most people, at least in Canada or North America, could find on a map. Uh, and yet from the research I'm doing, it would seem that uh, Uruguay, in particular the capital Montevideo, where you're based, is really the heart of a pretty vibrant tech ecosystem, uh, in particular around financial technology. So tell me, what, what exactly going on in, uh, in Montevideo? Uh, so I think that we are actually in a great moment. Uh, like this week, uh, it became our uh, it became public that we have our first unicorn in Uruguay, which is the local, and that's a huge milestone uh, for Uruguay. Um, like as you mentioned, uh, we are a really small country in the south of South America, uh, between Argentina and Brazil, which have huge economies and are far more big than us. Um, but actually, Uruguay has a great culture of software development. Uh, and especially for the financial sector, it's like we have three big providers of core systems uh, that support that solution through, uh, around the, the, the world. Uh, and since then, um, it's like there are many software engineers and software developers that have gone through these companies and that have a lot of experience and they have become uh, entrepreneurs. So they have built their own companies that also uh, provide financial technology for the financial sector and build solutions in this ecosystem. So right now, what you have is a, a lot of companies creating a huge huge ecosystem of financial services, uh, especially B2B, because as we are uh, such a small country, our the local market is like really small. Uh, so you have many companies providing B2B solutions uh, to the rest of the world from your way. In North America, I don't think we really know what open banking is. People talk about it in some circles, but there's very little traction. Um, but tell me what you're building at Prometeo and how it's working in Latin America for you. Okay, so um, basically Prometeo is like Plaid, but for LATAM. So what we're building is, I see it like a, a big highway of financial information. Um, so we bring a single point of access to information, transactions, and payments across multiple financial institutions in Latin America. Uh, right now, we are connected with more than 30 financial institutions in nine countries of the region. Uh, so basically, it's about building finan uh, financial technology, um, um, like techno infrastructure in terms of technology for the financial sector. Um, I know that, um, like, uh, if you see it from a regulatory point of view, uh, in the States, you don't have open banking. Uh, but actually, you do have open banking when you think about open banking as a technological tool. Um, so, in fact, uh, the States, it's more open banked than <laughs> the rest of the world. Uh, because in the States... All the banks provide APIs, um, just the, the exchange of information between financial institutions. Uh, it's more common than in other regions of the world. Um, so I think that uh, PLAD has done a lot uh, and in terms of creating this, this um, infrastructure. And all other companies like you also uh, have built a, a lot of, of APIs and, and have been very helpful in, in order to create this, this infrastructure. And that's what we are trying to achieve here with Prometeo. And in Latin America, is there a certain reason that you've been able to gain traction really quickly? Is, is there a reason that your financial institutions or customers are looking for this type of solution? Yes, uh, I think that uh, part of the of the problem in, in Latin America is that uh, there's a, a, 
like the financial market is really underserved, you know, uh, and there's a lot to be done in terms of building inclusion in, in Latin America. And that has, uh, it's really related to the lack of uh, tech in the financial sector. Uh, in Latin America, the, the banks are really conservative and they have uh, to do a, a lot more in order to keep up with the technological trends uh, across the world. Um, so what you're seeing is a great opportunity for fintech companies to develop this tech and to bring in innovat innovative solutions uh, to the banks. Uh, so I think that's why many fintechs um, are right now uh, like uh, booming in Latin America. And you're seeing that uh, like for, from companies like Nubank, of course, in Brazil and also in Mexico, um, lending companies like Confio uh, or Cubo in Mexico that are, are building great solutions. And of course, um, all these fintech companies, they need to be connected with banks. And that's where, where we come in, uh, um, like building this, this connection between them. Totally. So you mentioned that you're in nine countries so far, all in Latin America, but your solution doesn't really have any limits. I, I assume once you build those pipes, you can theoretically work anywhere, um, be it in Canada or the U.S. So do you have plans to grow further afield? Uh, yes, uh, we'd love to. Uh, like Our goal is to be the synonym of open banking for emerging countries. Uh, so right now we are just focused in Latin America and there's a lot to be done, especially in Brazil in, and Mexico with the regulations uh, coming to operate uh, this year and next year. Uh, but then we see our solution as a platform for emerging countries. Uh, so I think that uh, we can bring a lot of value to other, other regions like Southeast Asia or Afri Africa. Um, so we're eager to go there. For, for people like in Uruguay or for, for entrepreneurs in Uruguay, uh, we are um, mentally prepared to, to scale and to sell abroad, you know. Uh, it's like when you're building something locally, um, it, it, especially if you're building software, it's, you're just not thinking locally. And that's different to other countries like in Brazil or in Mexico that they have this huge market which is really diverse inside. So you can build a lot of solution and um, per se, it's a, it's a challenge to scale in the, inside the country, the solution. Uh, so for us, it's not, it's just like natural to think, how can I build something that can be scalable from scratch, that I can sell it abroad? And how do I build the process to commercialize this solution in other countries? Now, you mentioned a culture of software engineering. Now, where does this come from? Is it in the education system? And, and why focus on engineering? Uh, well, yes, in Uruguay, we have a really good uh, public education system uh, and really uh, well-educated population in general. Um, so uh, the, the engineer, uh, the public um, school uh, from engineering here, it's great. And then you have all these companies that built a robust uh, know-how for the people, you know, uh, like this is robust uh, knowledge of how to build things and have great processes and great software. So you develop like a lot of people with great software skills. Um, so I think and that's what has happened here. Now, you're a female founder. Does that matter in Uruguay? Um, I think it's fair to say here in Canada, it's the issue of inclusion with respect to gender, let alone some other things, is a top priority. What about in Uruguay? Uh, I think that is uh, an issue across the world. Uh, it's not that common to have um, like a parity in terms of uh, female uh, or male teams. Um, so it's hard to found, find women that are uh, actively um, coding or that are actively uh, building their startups, uh, at least uh, if, if you compare it to, to males, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but in Latin America, actually, uh, we have a good ratio uh, of female um, entrepreneurs building fintech solutions. Um, in Uruguay, it's not that uh, common to see. Uh, so I think that I'm one of the few that are building fintech solutions uh, from Uruguay. Um, so it's kind of strange, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, but um, 
like I'm really proud of being doing this. You know, uh, I, I'm really proud of uh, being able to build a, a great software, um, bring uh, financial inclusion uh, to Latin America, create a, a technological infrastructure, and also being a woman and being a mother. Uh, I think that um, it's a it's a good precedent for other women. You know, like uh, I think that. It's something um, like there's a, a lot of power in creating a, in creating a path mm-hmm. when, when there wasn't a path. One of the things that really sticks out for me in this conversation with Jimena is the fact that companies like hers are really primed to expand and succeed globally. And it's not because of the technology per se, rather it's because they understand how to apply that tech to real world problems. And in a world where there are a hell of a lot more people who are just getting formal banking solutions, companies like Jimena's are really well set up to solve their problems and win their business. Hey, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, and I'll see you next time for Their World, Our Future.